Hey everybody, I'm on take two because apparently I did not share my screen on the last one. So, oops. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to show everybody really quick, quick little, you know, five, 10 minute video on this, um, how to take tests in Blackboard and move them to your own course. So for example, I'm gonna use my Chem 111 hybrid um, master site here that we've created. You should all be in that site but um, this applies to any any time you're transferring between courses even if it's my own course already when i um, roll over for the new semester i always have to do this so what we're going to do is go in here the, the the lab module that i'm going to be moving over today is the week eight experiment so that's what our students are going to do when they come back so i built this for everybody to use um, you can't just click this gray arrow and move it over that will only move the test within the same course. So if I'm trying to go between courses, um, we, have to, we have to do it a different way. When I say test, I know that in the grading scheme, this is a lab report, right? And I can change that after I get it into the right spot, but um, Blackboard views this as a test. That's the format that it's in. All right, so the way to do this is to go to course tools, and then scroll all the way down to where it says tests, surveys, and pools. And then I'm going to click tests. Okay. And so every test in any given um, course is going to be listed here. So the one that we want to move over is this last one. So you can click this down arrow and click export to local computer. That just means that it's saving it on your computer. So you want to know where this file goes to. In my case, it went to my downloads and it's got this crazy long name. Okay, then I'm going to go into whatever course that I wanted to put this into. Uh, I'm just going to pick one of my past courses. Um, just random. So I'm going to go to wherever I want it to end up being. So this is our first one. What I would recommend you do is create a new content area by clicking on this little plus sign here and then go content area. I would just call it something to do with labs so that students know where to go. Oh, I did it too fast. I, there, there's a little button that says make available to students. Click that little checkbox. Um, and then that creates a new area for you to put materials. Then you can go to um, assessment, test, because again, even though we know this isn't actually a test, oop, erase that, we haven't uploaded it yet. Before we can add the test, we have to go back down to the course tools and down to test surveys and pools. We're uploading this as a test, so we're gonna click test. Now, um, so these are all the tests that I gave for this particular course. We're gonna add a new one, so import test, and then I browse on my computer. It's in my download folder. I have my folder organized by date, so it always shows me the most recent thing at the top. Um, if you don't, then you can actually like search right here. Sometimes if you just search for like master or maybe week eight or some part of the test file, it'll come up. And I click submit. Sometimes this can take a second. Um, oh, it says the operation was completed. Sometimes you get a message here that says status in process or in progress. Um, that's okay, just wait a few minutes and then it will be done. All right, so now we go to the content area where we want it to be. We click assessment and then we click test. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick the week eight lab report. Um, if you wanna change what is displayed um, in the initial screen that students get, you can, you can put some details here. Maybe you wanna put a due date or whatever, that's fine. Um, I like to give them, the this, this whole thing right here is the introduction to the actual lab that we were doing. So I like to show that to them at the beginning, sort of hope that they read it. Uh, and then I like to have it open in a new window so that they can still access the Blackboard content if they need to. If you want students to begin doing this now, you click yes. If not, you can go back in later and open it up to them. And you can even create an announcement from this, this window. You wanna probably enable multiple attempts. This means like if there's some kind of technical problem, then you don't have to go in and reset it. Um, if it's an actual quiz that I'm doing, I'll, I'll limit that to two attempts. But if it's a lab, I feel like they don't need to be limited on it. And I always choose the highest grade so that they get the best score of all their possible submissions. Um, 
you control when this shows up by entering, clicking this box and entering dates here. I don't usually do that for something like this. I like to leave it as open as possible. If you wanted to put a due date, you would check this box, put a date and a time. Um, and if you want to limit it to people not being allowed to do it after the due date, you can click this button. I think for this semester with all the craziness in people's lives, it's probably a better option to just leave it kind of open for them to do when they can. Um, Jen, would you please let Mia in? She's howling. The other thing that's really important to do is to double check this. You don't want to be giving people answers um, in the middle of the process because what? Jen, be quiet. No, open that door and be quiet. Because then they would have all the answers and that sort of defeats the purpose. But I do want them to get the answers after I'm done grading. You can choose other options, but make sure that you do at some point allow them to see the right answers. So you just click everything. Um, for this particular assignment, leave it at all at once. That means I'll see all the questions at one time because some of the questions are related to each other and they need to see the prior answers. Don't randomize this time. It's a good policy to do that with quizzes, but for our labs, it, it's not because um, the order is logical. All right, so this has launched it in my, in my course. Um, what I wanna do next is I wanna set it up so it's not showing up as, as a test, because it's not a test. And so I'm gonna show you a little bit about Grade Center. So we're gonna click the arrow here. And everything new ends up at the very end of your grading column, okay? Um, by the way, just so you know, this is what it looks like when students have submitted something. They probably submitted it way after the deadline um, and it needs to be graded. All right. Um, so there's that. And so what you're going to do is first you need to make a category for the lab report. So you click manage and then category. And I've already done this, but you would create the category and just name it something. So like lab reports, I have a separate category for pre-labs because I like to drop one lowest lab report and one lowest pre-lab at the end of the semester. But you can handle that however you want. You can make one category or whatever. But it's nice to have a, a lab section in there. So I built that category um, when I first made this website, this uh, course. And then you can go from to manage column organization in order to change that experiment. So they always go to the bottom to begin with. Um, I'm going to make this into the lab report category. So I like to just move that up into the right spot. So I organize things by sort of type of assessment. Um, so the box is still checked. It's in the right area now. And I'm going to go change, grade, uh, change grading category to lab report. It doesn't save it until you hit submit. OK, so that's how that's going to go. Um, so now it's moved into the right spot in the lab section. And when you go to grade it, you're gonna have those yellow exclamation points like you can sort of see in some places over here. And you can either click directly um, next to that particular exclamation point to grade that, or if you wanna grade them all at once, you click the arrow at the top and click grade attempts. You can even grade it with the names hidden. And sometimes that's a handy way of mitigating bias. Um, Finally, you should, you should know about this neat, neat feature where say it's a week after you've released the lab and nobody has done it yet, um, you can, you can at in grade center, click on the gray arrow next to the name of the, of the assessment and you can send a reminder to students. And it's gonna come up with a little alert that says, are you sure you wanna send these reminders? It even tells you how many students haven't done it. It won't remind people who finished it um, or at least who have started it maybe i'm not sure about that but anyway you can send reminders to people who haven't even started it um, and it just gets a, sends them a little email saying hey this thing is due and you haven't done it yet um, those kind of reminders are a helpful thing to do like you know periodically maybe once a week that way our students can stay on track remember that they might be taking care of children or having to balance crazy lives right now so um, i try to be a little bit sympathetic to that and give them a few nudges. <laughs> anyway, hopefully that helps. If you have questions, let me know.